Hey guys, every so often people who watch my videos will send me chess puzzles that either they've created themselves or that they found somewhere that they think are really cool. And a lot of the times I'll look at them and I'll be like, okay, that's kind of neat, but I'm not gonna feature it on the channel. However, every now and then I get some that are really fascinating and I do wanna feature those from time to time. So today I'm gonna be showing you three puzzles that were sent to me by viewers. So thank you to everybody who sent in a position. We're gonna start with this one right here, which was sent to me from Ben. So thank you, Ben, for sending this in. And before I say anything else, let me just point out, I'm gonna add a little graphic or something on the screen, maybe at the bottom corner, somewhere over here, where it shows which way the pawns are going, just because I know that's been a common question and a lot of people seem to get confused by that. So. I'm gonna start adding that so you can just look over there, but I will also tell you pawns are going forward in this one. And a little pro tip, if you haven't noticed this before, you see these numbers over here, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. White always starts on one and two. Okay, when you're looking at an online board like this, white will always start on one and two. If it's a real board, sometimes people set it up the wrong way, but online it's always gonna be this like, like this. White starts here and goes forward. So because of that, we know these pawns have to be going this way. Black always starts on seven and eight. Because of that, we know these pawns have to be going this way. Okay, so you can look there, uh, or like I said, I'll start adding that if it's a confusing position. All right, having said that, before I say anything else, if you would like to pause, how does white win this position with only two pawns against black's entire army? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, the first thing we need to point out is if you kind of waste a move here, like just get a random queen that doesn't do anything, black's gonna take here with check, forking your pieces, you're going to lose. And if you get a queen here with check, well, black's again gonna play bishop b7 check. Yes, you can move, but black's gonna simply play like knight c6. The king can now escape and run away, and you can't really do anything. So that's no good. So with that in mind, the first move to this puzzle is a8, not queen, but knight. And you get the check here. Of course, if the king try to run, tries to run up, you get a queen and that's checkmate. And so the only thing black can do is to run this way, king to c6. And it really looks like black's escaping, right? Like there's a path here that it seems like black's gonna get out, right? But what you need to do is get another knight. I mean, knights are pretty cool. Why not get another one, right? So here we go. Uh, this is taken away. The king is helping us box out here. So black has to retreat. And now if you would like to pause, uh, it's mate and six from here, and it's not super difficult. I think most of you guys can find this, so I won't say anything else. If you'd like to pause, go ahead and do that. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is knight to c7 check. And remember, this is taken away by this knight, and this is taken away by this knight, so the king has to go here. And then you have knight to d7 check. And now all of these squares are covered, so the king has to keep running. And then knight to e6 check. And you can see the pattern, right? Like the, the king doesn't have a choice, has to keep running. Knight to f6 check. Again, same thing. These squares are taken away. King has to run. Knight to f4 check. And it looks like black's escaping over here, right? Wrong. Look at this. The knight's controlling there. This knight comes in. And that is a nice checkmate. So I believe... If I don't, if I remember correctly, I think Ben said he made this puzzle himself. So if that's true, very nice job. Uh, I'd be curious to know what your process was, Ben. Like, how do you come up with this? Because that was pretty cool. And so thank you for sending that in. Uh, definitely like that one. And now let's go ahead and jump over to number two. All right, so this position was sent from champion 6A. White's pawns are going forward. It's white to play and win. If you would like to pause and think through what do you think the correct move is, go ahead and do that now. All right, well, if you had a chance to do that, the move is d6, and it makes a lot of sense. We're going to try to go and get a queen, right? Because if we can get a queen, it's checkmate, and we win. So d6 makes a lot of sense. Okay, black, of course, has to try to stop that from happening. The king can't move, which means the knight has to do something about it. You can't go over here. You just don't have time, right? Like if you, either of these moves, we simply push it. The knight can move somewhere, doesn't matter, and we just get a queen and win, right? The knight is too slow. Okay, so the only thing black can do is knight to g6. And yes, the knight is undefended. We could simply take it if we want. The problem is now black is stalemated because where is he going to move? But he's not in check. So that's kind of black's little trick. And if we play d7, it looks at first glance like, wait a minute, the knight can't stop us. We're going to win, right? Wrong. Black has a very clever idea. Knight to f8. And guess what happens if we get a queen? That's correct. 
this is another stalemate because the knight is pinned, it can't move, and also the king can't move, and of course, the pawn can't move. So, very clever trick by Black. The question for us is, what do we do? Because if we don't move our pawn, Black's going to take it. So if you'd like to pause, what's the correct move in this position? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the rook actually does the same thing. It also stalemates black, so we don't want a rook or a queen. And we could try a knight with the idea of coming in here for checkmate. The problem is black's going to move the knight and maybe just tank the pawn. And now there's a square. The king can escape. And this is actually just a draw. Okay, We're not going to be able to win it from here. So the only way we win is promote to a bishop. And we're simply threatening checkmate, but it's actually much more involved than that, okay? And the reason is because black can stop the checkmate. Black can simply just take here. Knight takes h7, get rid of the pawn, and defend the checkmate. And also open up an escape square for the king. It really looks like black is escaping and going to draw this game, right? But here's the thing. Bishop to e7, and notice what we have done to black's knight. We've essentially trapped the knight, Right? Like if the knight moves anywhere, we're just going to take it. And so because of that, black is basically forced to play king to g8. And now we slide our king over and we're attacking the pawn. Also kind of keeping black boxed in. Like what are they going to do? If they go back to the corner, we're going to win not by taking this. Right? If we take this, it's going to be a draw because now the king escapes and the knight at some point will just sacrifice itself for the pawn when we try to push it. And it's going to be a draw. But what we can play is king to f7. And remember how the knight didn't want to be traded? Well, now we're forcing it to be traded or actually to just get captured because the king can't move, right? And so the knight has to move somewhere. It doesn't really matter. We simply take it and now we're going to win this end game, okay? So that's the, the clever idea that we have if the king goes back into the corner. So because of that, the only move that black can play that doesn't lose the knight for free is knight to f8. And if we take it right now, and black takes, and we take the pawn. You guys should know this, but um, if you remember the, the live stream we did where we talked about opposition, black is able to get the opposition uh, on white, and the game is a draw, right? Because every time we move, black's going to simply mirror our king, and the only thing we could do would be to eventually push our pawn, but again, this is going to be a drawn end game. The king just goes straight back, and when we come up over... And ultimately, it's a draw. Okay, go watch that live stream if you're not sure how this works. But essentially, we can't do anything, right? So we don't want to take that knight right away. So let me go all the way back right here. But what we can do instead is take the pawn. And remember, if the knight is able to sacrifice itself for our pawn, the game is a draw. We can't win. However, it turns out... As crazy as it looks, the knight can't do that. The knight has no way to sacrifice itself for this pawn. You can't go here to try to take it because we'll just take the knight. And if you try to loop around, like knight to d7 looks like a pretty good try because you have, you know, you have lots of options over here. We're going to play king to e6 and the bishop and the king are actually doing a great job of stopping all of these moves from the knight, right? So the knight has to choose between one of these two. And it turns out neither of them is any good. So for example, if you go here, there's this crazy move, bishop to c5, and the point is we're getting ready to, to trap the knight depending on where it moves. So, for example, if it moves here, we're going to play bishop d6, and look what we've done. We've trapped the knight. This is kind of a an idea you want to keep in the back of your mind in endgames. Whenever a knight's on the edge of the board, a bishop can always trap it like this, and the knight literally has no moves or it just gets captured. So that's one thing. The other thing the knight could have done is went to c6. But again, bishop to b6, and we're kind of trapping it in a different way by using our king to help. See that? We've taken away all those squares. The knight is forced to go to one of these two squares, which doesn't help it. Yes, it can go there. Now we just push our pawn. And yes, it can kind of hop around this way. But it again, we can kind of do the same thing. Bishop to e3. And we're taking away those key squares where the knight would like to go to. So this is a much more advanced puzzle. It's, it's very long, but the point is that this bishop just keeps jumping around, stopping the knight from getting to where it needs to get, and as slowly but surely, we push our pawn as we have time. So for example, best move for black would be knight to b4. Now we push it. The knight can try to come in. Now we push it, and then uh, you know black can try to block, but we simply go here, that's checkmate. Or on king to g7, we can play, let's see, what's the fastest way? Bishop to h6 will do the job, or you could play bishop to b6. And again, we're just preventing that knight from coming over. And I don't know what black is going to do, but 
let's just say they move this here. Well, now we can simply go check, check, and then get a queen. All right, so like I said, it's a, it's a long one, but it's pretty interesting, right? How the knight has no way to get around the bishop. And it, this is a really good example, actually, of how bishops can dominate knights in certain endgame positions, right? When the knight doesn't have support from like another pawn or a king or something to help defend it, the bishop can really cut those squares and the knight ends up just not being able to do what it needs to do. So really fascinating position when you think about all the little tricks that were involved there, like all those stalemate tricks, you had to promote to the bishop instead of the queen. And then you go into this like, okay, dance where you do, do all this stuff with your bishop and ultimately you win with the king and, you know, with the pawn pushing forward. So really nice puzzle. Thank you, uh, champion 6A for that one. All right, and next up, last but not least, we have our final position from Glitch1122. And this one's kind of a mess when you first look at it, but let me explain what's going on and then I'll, I'll see if you can figure out them. Actually, before I say anything, I'll just tell you this. It's white to play and not lose. Okay, so you're trying to get a draw with white. Uh, what should you play and why if you'd like to pause and then we will talk about it. Again, white's pawns are going forward. Black's pawns are going this way. All right, so if you had a chance to look at that, this position is kind of a mess. Like I said, uh, black has obviously two queens, two rooks, and the worst part for white is the king. Okay, the king is completely stuck over here, about to be checkmated if white is not extremely careful. So, for example, if you were to play a random move like rook takes e7, um, black's going to simply, for one, just take your queen. But then in the next two moves, regardless of what you do, you're getting checkmated. Queen c5, queen takes here. Checkmate is one example. There's a couple of other ones, but you get the idea. Anything you do leads to checkmate. Um, so by the way, if you take the queen, I'll just show you this one. Bishop G4 is also checkmate. Um, so you can't do that. Now there's one move that looks like, okay, I can take here with check and then the king can move up and I can play B6 check and it lures the king out and it's like, okay, this looks pretty good. Maybe I have some, some check with my queen and I can actually do something. The problem is there aren't any good checks. So let's look at this carefully. If we go here, the black queen's going to take us. If we go here, the pawn's going to take us. If we go here, one of these queens is going to take us. If we go here, the queen's going to take us. Queen to f2 check is the only you know good check with our queen where we don't get captured. However, after this, black can simply play queen ac5 check. Yes, we can throw in this move. And yes, we can take a queen if we want, but we're still getting checkmated. Queen to e8, we have to block, and this is checkmate. Okay, so regardless of that, it's, it's over. So that's the problem. Like we don't have any good checks with our queen. So if you would like to pause, um, there is an idea lurking in this position and it's kind of crazy to think about, but um, see if you can find it. There's one move that white has that saves the game. I'll give you a second to pause and then we'll talk about it. All right, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is the crazy rook to b3 check. And Yes, there's nothing defending the rook. So why are we doing this? Well, the point is we are trying to get a stalemate. And I know that sounds crazy because it's like, well, we have three pieces. How, how could we get a stalemate? We're actually trying to force black to capture all three of these pieces to end up in a stalemate. And so we're starting with this one. And for example, if black takes it, we keep going. Queen to F2 check. And it's actually, you have to be like very precise about how you do it or it doesn't work, but so that we don't get bogged down in, in too much, uh, I'll just show you the main line here, but like rook c5 check. And then after this, we simply just keep checking with our, our queen, right? Like check, check, we force black to take and it's a stalemate. We can't move because the rook is, is you know, keeping our king boxed in. So that's the point. And amazingly, there's no way for black to get away from it. Like let's say they try to run instead of taking this rook. Well, now we can go queen to e3 check. And then if they block, we just keep taking stuff. Basically, rook takes b7. Queen takes. Queen takes c5 check. Queen b6. Rook to a8 check. Right? King takes. Queen to c8 check. And I'll, we're just, we don't even care. We don't even, we're just going to do something like this. Or, sorry, not this one. That's a huge blunder. I just messed that up because now black can take, and it's not a stalemate because we can push our pawn. So you do have to be careful. I, I, did, I messed that up. You have to take here. And then regardless of how black takes, it's a stalemate. So you can mess it up. But really crazy idea when you think about it. Like let's go back to the beginning for a second. 
essentially the way that you draw this position for white is to force black to capture all four of these pieces so that the game ends in a stalemate. That's the game plan, right? Wild stuff. So thank you, uh, Glitch1122. Appreciate that one as well. Hope you guys enjoyed those puzzles. If you have any crazy ones that you know of that I haven't already covered on the channel, feel free, leave them in the comments, email me, whatever you want to do. And um, I'll try. I can't promise a lot of puzzles that get sent to me I actually don't feature. But uh, if it's really amazing, maybe you'll see it. Thank you guys for watching. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.